Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 3 of this tactics test series. We're running a new tactic today across four of the top five leagues in Europe and we're seeing how they get on not only domestically but also with the different levels of European competition. So let's run the credits, let's get into it. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the episode. Um, as you know, we're running a tactics test series, test and tactics with four teams in Europe's top five leagues. Those are Nice in France, because they have domestic competition only, no European competition. We're testing with Tottenham Hotspur in England, because they have domestic competition plus Europa Conference football. Lazio in Italy, because they have domestic and Europa League football. And Wolfsburg in Germany, because they have domestic and Champions League football as well. At the beginning of FM22, after the most recent update, all four teams are predicted to finish sixth in their league. So we thought it would be a fair balance to, to, to match the teams against each other where they're expected to finish domestically. And luckily enough, they, they it worked out like that, that they also have the different European competition as well. So first of all, let's have a look at the tactic, team instructions and the player instructions as well. So here we have the tactic, um, a little bit similar to the uh, tactic we have in episode two. It is a 4-3-3, 4-3-2-1, whichever you prefer to call it. Uh, we are going to have a quick look at the instructions themselves for the team, and then we will look at the player instructions. Uh, as you can see, or maybe you can't see here, it's quite difficult to read. It is set as a custom gegenpress, and the mentality is positive. In possession, we're playing standard width, we're going to play out from the defence, play the ball in the space, shorter passing, extremely high tempo. Uh, our final third is going to be low crosses, work the ball into the box, no additional instructions. In transition, again, we're going to go with a counter press and a counter attack. And our goalkeeper is going to distribute to the centre backs and the full backs, no specific instructions of how they wish to do that. And finally, out of possession. A couple of instructions added in here. We're going to use the offside trap, play a higher line of defence, a much higher line of engagement. We're going to force the opposition inside. We're going to trigger press more, much more often and we're going to try and prevent the goalkeeper from short distribution as well. So that's the team instructions. We'll get a quick look at the player instructions for you. The goalkeeper, uh, just standard goalkeeper on defence duty, nothing extra added there. In fullback, we actually have identical instructions for both left back and right back uh, both set as a wing back on automatic uh, duties we have added take more risks cross more often shoot less often sit narrower and tackle harder we want our wing backs to start narrow create a, a a narrow defense make it harder for them to get through and then break out on both wings certainly dribble more um or take more risks cross more often we want them to get down the line a lot more and whip balls into the box in centre back, we have uh, two ball playing defenders on defend duty with the exact same instructions as well. Dribble more, we want them to carry the ball out, shoot less often, stay wider, uh, try and maximise that um, defensive line, and uh, tackle harder as well. In front of the two defenders, we have a half back on defend duty. Um, when the defenders, the two centre backs, do go that little bit wider, he will fall into that space and co cover any gaps. Um, again, shoot less often, tackle harder, no additional instructions after that. In centre mid, we have a box-to-box -box midfielder, take more risks, dribble more, shoot less often, move in the channels, tackle harder. Uh, we want him to break forward into the box, move into the channels obviously, and try and be more effective in the final third. And beside our box-to-box -box midfielder, we have a roaming playmaker. Similar instructions, uh, Roman playmaker on support, similar instructions, dribble more, shoot less often, move in the channels, tackle harder. On the wings we have, um, which is maybe a little bit of um, an ambitious, maybe gamble, I guess, uh, we have twin rodimateurs, not sure if I pronounced that correctly, on attack duty. We have take more risks, shoot less often, tackle harder, with their uh, original default positions as well, uh, instructions where they move in the channels, roam from position, get further forward, etc. Up front we have a complete forward on attack duty, shoot more often and tackle harder and no further instructions required there. So that is the player instructions and the team instructions with the tactic. Let's have a little look at uh, Nice as the first team and we'll see how they get on in their competitions. 
So as we can see with Nice in the Coupe de France, we have got to the 10th round in the competition. It sounds a lot greater than what it is. It's only the, the, the second round from entry. Um, the uh, Ligue 1 teams enter the Coupe de France in the 8th round or the ninth round. Uh, we, we've won two games. They enter in the eighth round. So apologies, they enter in the ninth round. Uh, we've won one game and we were knocked out in the next game against Lille. That's fine, that's okay. We're not too concerned about that. What we're looking at is Liga table itself. As you can see here, we finished in second place with uh, 76 points, four points ahead of Rennes, uh, five points ahead of Strasbourg. So we're pretty comfortable in the Champions League qualifications there. Uh, let's have a little look at the team himself. And as we can see, Andy Delore, as expected, has finished as top goal scorer with 23 goals, contributing only two assists, but that's not what he's there for. He's there to score goals. Casper Dahlberg has contributed with 18 goals. Calvin Stang's even contributing with 12. And Aguirre and Cliver contributing nine goals apiece each as well. In the assists, we can see there Calvin Stengs playing off the wing um, has been our most creative player with 16. Kasper Dolberg played a lot on the left wing for us as well. He and Yusuf Atal have contributed nine assists as well. And in the average ratings, Todibo is finished our second best player, 0 0.01 points ahead of Andy Delore on 7.3. And Calvin Stengs, Kasper Dolberg, and Yusuf Atal coming in in the top five for us this season as well. So that is it for Nice. That's how we get on with those competitions. Let's jump over to Tottenham Hotspur and see how we get on domestically and in Europe as well. Well, the good news, first of all, from Tottenham Hotspur is we didn't get sacked. So in the previous two uh, tactics, we've been sacked, which was not a great start to this series. But we've actually done extremely well with Tottenham Hotspur with this tactic now. Um, I, I, I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, the tactic we called Midnight Poutine. Again, it's, it's a Ted Lasso reference, um, a big fan of the show, check it out if you're not familiar with it. Um, but also check out our Life After Lasso series where we manage AFC Richmond through the Premier League for three years. But as we can see here, first and foremost, we have won the Europa Conference League, which we're absolutely delighted about. We beat Galatasaray 2-0 in the final. As you can see here, Harry Kane scored 13 goals in the competition, which is incredible. Um, so we delighted to win that first piece of silverware. As well as that, we've also actually won the FA Cup. And as you can see here, we beat Leeds 2-1 in the final. Again, Harry Kane, top goal scorer in the competition. Steve Bergwijn coming in with four assists there. Joint top on assists, along with Son, O'Hare, Azaz and Housen as well. Um, so absolutely delighted to get those guys on the board. Uh, in the league, as you will see here, we've finished in fourth place. So not only have we won two competitions, we've also qualified for the Champions League as well. Um, there is a, a little bit of a dip. We'll look at that in just a second here. But as we can see, we finished in 73 points, quite comfortably four points ahead of Arsenal. So we had that wrapped up with a game to spare. And really and truly, we're not too far off there. We're only, what's that, six points behind Man City. We have lost nine games, so nine games... It's quite a lot to lose there. And when you look at the list, you know, we lost to Aston Villa, Southampton, Brighton and Norwich. All games we would expect to, to win. That's um, potentially 12 extra points could have put us very, very comfortably in second place. Uh, we did lose to Chelsea, Man City, Liverpool. Man City and Liverpool twice. Um, narrow, you know, 3-2 against Man City. Maybe we could have done better there. But that's fine. Let's have a little look at the players and see how we get on. Um, so as you would expect, Harry Kane has finished top goal scorer. He has amassed a total of 49 goals across the season. He's also contributed 14 assists as well, which is pretty incredible. We can see here Lucas Moura with 17 goals, Human Son with 16, Dejan Kulzewski with 15, and Stevie Bergwijn with 12. And even Hoiberg has contributed 11 goals and 9 assists as well. So Hoiberg, certainly not a player I expected to have these kind of numbers. Hoiberg has done fantastically well for us as well. A uh, quick look at the assists. As we can see, Human Son's coming in there top of the assist list with 20. Kulzeski with 16. Keane with 14, as we mentioned. Stevie Bergwijn with 11. Lucas Moura with 10. And even there, Hoiberg with 9 assists as well. In terms of top ratings, um, we have here Davison Sanchez, 
somewhat surprisingly i mean first of all he scored four goals which in itself is a bit of a rarity because i think in his his whole Tottenham career so far he's only ever scored one goal maybe two but he's contributed four goals for us this year he's played a total of 43 games and he's got a 7.33 rating at the back and just narrowly beaten harry kane by 0.2 christian romero 7.3 as well emerson royale 7.2 and Rodrigo Bettencourt with just under 7.2. So as you can see, our defenders play actually really well in this formation too. At least our Spurs players anyway. So um, that is it for Spurs. Let's jump over to Lazio and let's have a look at how they get on. Well, it's been a bit of a mixed bag with Lazio really. Um, we've done pretty well in the Europa League. We've got the semi-final where we were knocked out by Chelsea. We've done okay in the Coppa Italia, we've got to the quarter-final where we've been knocked out by Atalanta. However, in the league, we have finished in sixth place, which is the media prediction at the start of the season. Um, as you can see here, we finished sixth by two points, two, so only two points has kept us out of fifth. And uh, what's that? Five points has kept us out of the Champions League. Again, we've had nine defeats across the season. And as you can see there, some of the teams, uh, Bologna, Cagliari, um, Bologna twice, in fact, have beat us. Cagliari, uh, even Fiorentina, you would expect us to win. So there's a few points there, certainly we, we could have picked it up. Um, had we not been simulating the, the season, if we had have actually played the game, we might have been able to make little tactical changes and tweaks throughout to turn those results around. Um, so we've done okay. We've finished in sixth. We've got, we, we finished where we expected to be. It's not the worst season in the world, really. Um, as we can see, you've had this kind of run away a little bit there. Inter Milan not too far behind um, but it's it's been okay uh, let's get a little look at the player stats themselves um, as you would expect Chiro Mobley finished in top goal scorer scored 51 goals in 50 games which is fantastic contributing five assists and also coming in with a 7.5 average rating um, as we can see Pedro contributed 14 goals Milinkovic Savage with 11 Luis Alberto with 10 uh, it's a Kanye with eight as well. So he, our central midfielders certainly do contribute massively in terms of goals and assists. As we can see here, Luis Alberto with 16 assists, Pedro with 15, it's a Kanye with 14, and uh, Marusic, I hope I pronounced that correctly, um, playing, played a little bit in the wing, played mostly in defence, um, contributing with nine assists as well. Um, so that is it for Lazio. As I say, not a great tactic. Again, uh, it might be player specific. Maybe the players just didn't suit the system. Um, but they, they've done okay. We, we've progressed well in the Cups. Not okay in the league. Uh, but we certainly could do a lot better. But Chiro Mobley there scoring 34 goals in the league is fantastic. We'll just have a quick little look here. And as we can see, he has finished top goal scorer in the league as well. So that is it for Lazio. Let's go over to Wolfsburg and have a look at our final club for this test. So as you can see here, uh, again, very much a mixed bag with Wolfsburg. We've done okay in the Cups. We've got the semi-final of the DFB Pokal. We've been beat by Borussia Dortmund, who finished second in the league. In the Champions League, we've got the first knockout round where we were beat by Man City. You would probably expect that. In the league, though, is where we have suffered that little bit more. We have finished in ninth place, so we haven't even qualified for Europe this year. Surprisingly, we weren't sacked. You know, with Spurs, we were uh, ninth by November and we got sacked. But as you can see from the league standings here, we've actually had a pretty big fall. And we'll look at that in just a little second. We have lost a total of 14 games. And again, there are some fixtures there that you would expect we probably should have won. Um, the likes of, um, let's see, FC Köln. We've lost to Freiburg. We've lost to um, Herder Berlin. Uh, we've lost to Köln twice. So, so some results there. Well, actually, Colin have done pretty well. Actually, they, they finished in fourth place. They qualified for the Champions League. Um, so n definitely not our, our, our strongest performance. Uh, we'll have a quick look at the past positions. And as we will see here, it started out pretty well. I mean, after two games, we were top of the league. We sat in second for quite a while there. We sat in second for, uh, what's that, 10 weeks. We dropped down to fourth and it just continually got worse from there. We spent a lot of time in sixth position and then in the last couple of weeks, just couldn't get those results that we needed and we ended up in ninth position. So that's probably really what saved us from being sacked is the fact that we had a relatively decent-ish season up to that point. We were still in the top six until the last three or four weeks and that's where we lost it. 
Uh, having a quick look at the team themselves in terms of goals, not a great return. Uh, Lucas Nemetia scored 21 in total across, what's that, 41 games. Um, Luca Bacchio has contributed 11 goals. Jonas Vind has contributed only 7. And Walshmitt contributed 5. Assists-wise, we've got 9, we've got 8, we've got 7, we've got 6, we've got 5. Um, so obviously we haven't scored a lot of goals, so there's not a lot of assists. And our average rating is in great either, 7.22 for uh, Lacroix in defence, uh, Arnold in defensive midfield, Brooks in defence and uh, Ronaldo Steven playing uh, mostly as a defender as well. So our, our top players, our top four players, they're all getting a 7.0 or above. They're all defensive minded players. So they are so certainly with the Wolfsburg team, not great for the attacking options. So as we mentioned there, it's not been a great tactic in some regards. It, it did pretty well for us with Nice and with Spurs, not so much with Lazio and Wolfsburg, who had harder European competition to contend with as well. Maybe that worked in favour of Spurs and with Nice as well, because they had Europa Conference and no European football respectively. So a decent information, certainly something we can build on. We can take the information from that and at the end of the season, maybe we'll look to build something of a, a more perfect tactic we'll call it where we can take little bits of information from each of these 10 tactics that we're testing um, but that is it for now we will see you in the next tactics test uh, again please do like share subscribe tell all your friends please let us know what you think uh, you can download the link for the tactic in the description below as well but until the next time thank you very much and take care Hi guys, thanks for watching, really hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please do hit that subscribe button, it helps us to bring you more videos like this in the future. In the meantime, you can watch one of these recommended videos, and we will see you in the next one. Thanks again, and take care.